Hello. Hello, everybody in the future. Currently, I'm doing a, a live broadcast for my patrons only, but I don't see anybody yet, so I don't know. Oh, there's people appearing in the chat. Awesome. Hello, everyone. My name is Odin, and today is going to be the second Patreon only, uh, also exclusive to my Discord, which is Patreon only, uh, Lego live stream. My plan today is to build a Lego set and just chat with those of you who are part of my Discord, and I really appreciate it, guys, honestly. Um, this, this week, unlike last time, I'm going to be doing a much smaller set. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of building Mechagodzilla. I still have stuff on the table for building Mechagodzilla because pretty much as soon as the stream is over, I got to go back to putting the thighs together. So I'm going to try and do a shorter stream this week. <laughs> but um, before we get started on that, let's put on the reading glasses and see what people have to say. Uh, do, do. We've got a Morning Odin from Eric Gordon, and I have uh, Hey Odin, Hello Jonathan Weiser, Weisner, I've left the N out. Hello Nora. Uh, William Connors says, Hello Odin and everyone else. So from William Connors to everyone, hello. Um, the Jack of All Trades says, Hey Will, back. Great, I shouldn't read all these. Oh good, Jerry Rig Props is here. And there we go. So we got a good, got a good mix of, of some of my regulars in, in the chat room currently. So Jerry, I specifically did decide to go ahead and just do this set, even though I did say I was going to make a, a, a poll. It, I, I apologize, it just didn't quite happen. It's been an interesting week. Uh, I keep saying that a lot. I was trying to get things caught up this week, and uh, I kind of did, but at the same time, um, spent a full day shooting with Felicia, uh, spent a full day shooting with somebody else doing an entirely different project, so all of a sudden, my week was kind of gone. I mean, that's only two days, really, but we only have four. That feels like a lot of time gone. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a really quick build this week. I do have uh, the set fully deconstructed. This is the DeLorean, the Back to the Future set. This was from the Kusu line. I think that's how you pronounce it. C-U-U-S, infinity symbol, or O-O. Uh, this is what Lego Ideas was before, and then they realized that the name's kind of weird and nobody really knew how to pronounce it, so they went to Lego Ideas instead, which I think works much better. But they kept the same number uh, system. So this is set number four, and even in the Lego Ideas, version if this ever gets re-released re it'll still be number four um before i get going on this is there anything else fun to talk about because the whole point is to be here with my friends from discord uh jonathan weech is here missed the last one so hopefully caro will sign in because they were uh they were talking about how excited they were that this was happening <coughs> but We'll see. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> wow. Hey, welcome to Odin Chokes. <clears throat> definitely, Jerry, I think you should get one of these sets. Um, I like this. <clears throat> yep, this isn't, isn't going away. <laughs> the glory of live streams. <clears throat> this week on Odin Dies, uh, it is actually a really cool set. It's a, it's a six wide automobile, so I think it's the same, uh, right? Is it six or, or is it eight? Nope, it's eight wide. So it's actually wider than the Lego Racers. I think all the Lego Racer sets are only six stud wide. And most of the city and town vehicles classically were four stud wide, right? So this is a nice wide vehicle. It's wide enough that Doc and Marty can actually sit side by side in the seats in the inside of the DeLorean like they're supposed to. <clears throat> <laughs> I got people laughing at me saying, your lungs okay? The lungs are doing good. It's just that little bit of tube in between like the outside air and what's supposed to be in the lungs. That's got obstruction. <laughs> uh, Eric Gordon, so quick, quick, good Back to the Future question. Which Back to the Future film is my favorite? Honestly, generally speaking, two because I really enjoy going to the future. I really enjoy the, the back and forth. The first one is a classic and it's a really good movie and it's a solid movie and it doesn't need anything else. They race off to the future to take care of something. You don't need to see it. But I enjoyed um, the continuation of the story so I really enjoyed the second one. And there's things about the second one that I really enjoyed. Um, one, of the, one of the things was since it was made in the late 80s, 
the spinner props from uh, Back to Back to the Future. Yeah, from Back to the Future. The spinner props from Blade Runner were still fairly readily available, and parked a couple of houses down from Marty's future house in the driveway is a repainted spinner from Blade Runner. Uh, I'm sure it's just one of the shells, but uh, it was one of those things that as soon as they were in the future, I'm in the theater thinking, yeah, I got to watch for this. It's going to be here somewhere. And it was. It was just in the driveway. They made no big deal about it because it would be recognizable, but the property master was having fun and made sure it made it onto set. Um, what's annoying is my version on DVD, when the trilogy finally came out in North America for the first time on DVD, I bought the set. It was letterboxed. This is exciting. For the first time, I'm going to be able to see, you know, the, the spinner again, right? I think I had it on Laserdisc, so I, I could see it there. But on DVD, I was going to be able to see it again. Only the version I got, the very first version of, of the trilogy, the Back to the Future 2 specifically had a manufacturing problem. They took what's called a pan and scan version of the film. That's when you, um, because you have something letterbox is what we're looking at now, 16 by 9, right? That's, that's the letterbox with the old television standard when it was 4 by 3, which is what Justice League is currently. So you know how Justice League has got the black bars on the side? Well, when you watched a letterbox movie on the 4 by 3 screen, you had black bars on the top and the bottom. To make a pan and scan version for distribution on television, they would increase the size of the frame until there weren't any black bars on the side, but you would cut off part of the movie on the side. And some of the movies that were shot with a really wide aspect ratio, like Panavision, you could lose almost half the image. So what happened with the Back to the Future DVD, and it was really weird, Back to the Future didn't have a huge aspect ratio, which is good, but um, they took a pan and scan version of the film, and then put the bars on it as if it was the letterbox version. So not only was it blown in and you lost stuff off the sides, they then added black bars to the top and the bottom, which for a different reason was standard, but they added that and now you lost even more footage. So I've got this zoomed in, missing half the shots. I mean, half the time you've got the character's foreheads cut off, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's framed wrong. Yeah, that was kind of annoying. So you can't see the DeLorean in that version. <sighs> Ooh, hey, the point. Uh, why is it standard to put the black bars on stuff? Because when your um, film came first and the 4 by 3 aspect ratio is just what 35 millimeter film had. Television came along and copied film, so it had the same aspect ratio that film had, 4 by 3 You know, it's full screen, this is what it's going to be, great, let's go with it. Well, then the movies decided they wanted to get people back out of the homes from watching TV and into the movies. They started creating all these larger aspect ratios. Um, the lenses you use to shoot those either stretches the, the image so it fills the full 4x3 frame. That's called anamorphic, right? So you have, a, you have a lens and like a wide angle lens, like looking at your doorbell, your door peephole in your doorway. Uh, well, some doorbells have holes. Um, it takes this wide image and then squeezes it to fit the 4x3 frame, so you use all the available information that's within the, fil uh, the film cell to make that wide image. Uh, or you could shoot it flat, where you have a lens that's, that sees the image just as the human sees the image, and then it's just a 4x3 image, but then you go back in post and add in the black bars. And uh, Jurassic Park was shot that way, uh, or at least I had access to a version of the film that was that was rendered flat. And they also did this differently for the projection houses at the time because the mechanical movie projectors, some would do anamorphic, some would do, or scope, and some would do flat. So uh, specifically, when we got a hold of a, uh, we, <laughs> I had nothing to do with it, when a collector in town got a hold of a 35 millimeter copy of Jurassic Park and it was the flat format. So the the, the picture was normal to look at, but it had the black bars on the top and the bottom. Um, the film was saved out that way, but they didn't bother to, to crop the film. The, the gate was left up to, to the projectionist to add in uh, when it was going to be shown in the theaters. So uh, the collector decided to show it at a local theater where he had access to an old school 35 millimeter film projector where he didn't have to put the gates on it, so he didn't. We were able to watch the entire movie in the four by three aspect ratio, seeing footage you're never supposed to see, and that was a real treat. 
Um, like you can see all the lights on top of the dinosaur paddock, uh, the Tyrannosaur paddock, right? When all the lights are supposed to be out, but the set lights are on top of all the fence posts. Or the entire time when Hammond first meets up with um, Elliot Grant, right? In, in their trailer in, in, out of the archeological dig, um, you have the boom mic because they're inside the trailer and it's in shot the entire time moving back and forth because the ceiling was in the way that that was just the way it was and the black bar would have cut it out so it was really fun seeing all that but then you could see all the digital scenes all the things when they went through and added dinosaurs or removed wires or whatever digital manipulation they did because they only rendered the pixels they needed so all of a sudden for that one shot it would go letterbox and it would go back to being full screen it'll go back to letterbox again so anyway real fun way for to see it i wish i could get a copy of that on video i can't <laughs> oh well i got to see it once it was an experience and fun long-winded story how's it going guys <laughs> was that enjoyable for anyone else um, oh, good, Mr. Grandland. Hey, Odin, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. J period, as a child, we only had part three on, VH on VHS. I watched it all the time, but it's really confusing starting with part three. Yeah, I bet it is. You know. Um, yep, and we got other people. <laughs> Eric Orton today on Odin Makes, Odin teaches film theory. Uh, just the little bits that I know because of friends who were in theater and uh, I had I had a fr uh, How many people did I know that worked at movie theaters in Sacramento like five? Uh, one managed the theater one guy another guy would actually set up the prints back when they were film reels He had to assemble them and 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 put them onto the the platter so they could actually play And this you had to do the night before the Friday when the movies came out or whenever the time was And you had to do it in the middle of the night when you had time to do it And then you had to watch the whole thing to make sure you assembled it right so I got to see a few movies super Late early, you know best way to see Battlefield Earth only way to see Battlefield Earth I don't ever want to see that movie again um, and I knew another guy that helped uh, kickstart and refurbish a, a local classic theater so and, and I've known a number of, of people that worked in movie theaters so I've got this weird knowledge of, of bits and pieces of movie theaters <laughs> Jerry says, good story. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> and Ben and Lynch says, ah, oh, I'm late. Sorry. It's all right, Ben. And welcome. So we're 15 minutes into the stream. Maybe I should touch some Lego. Uh, let's see. What have I got? I have the, like I talked about before, it's the Back to the Future set. This is the, effectively, the Lego Ideas number four. It had a different name at the time. And this <laughs> makes a lot of noise. I have built this before. This is a, this has just got all the parts in the box. Let's see, do I have uh, my own? Oh, nope, I'm not on the right camera. <laughs> Is this gonna work out? This should work out. Nope, it's not gonna work out. Oh, am I on four? No, I'm not on four, there it is. Oh, you know, today on Odin Makes, he learns how to work with a switcher. So I have built this before. Oh, I didn't realize I had that in there. That's kind of cool. I'll show you guys that in a second. But I've got all the pieces. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I built it. So this is going to be kind of fun. I can't remember why I tore it apart other than I was planning on making it again. Pieces are, <laughs> pieces are running away. Um, somebody had asked last time about doing a close-up Let's move all the parts before I talk too much about doing a close-up of the instruction book while I was building in order to give everyone a, a chance to be able to see what was going on and play along. Well, unfortunately, I don't have that set up, so I apologize. That's that's not, not here and ready. But uh, I do have the minifigures pre-made. I'm always amused that Marty came with a purple skateboard um because if it was going to be the uh if it was going to be the mattel hoverboard to be pink right and i don't remember what color his board was there's a trivia question that i would get wrong what color was marty's skateboard in back to the future one of course it comes with a uh, one of those guys so 
So I've got all the cameras set on the uh, super crazy tight. Oh, there we are. There's the there's the the other detailed piece. Oh, am I really that off? Oh, whoops. Sorry, guys. Now that I look up and realize I'm totally setting these out on the wrong side. And that's what I get for assuming the TV is a mirror, which of course it's not. Now the the characters are um, were re-released for Lego Dimensions. Uh, which was kind of cool. It was great to be able to get them again, but um, it was a little bit disappointing that the characters are basically exactly the same mini minifig. They didn't, it's like, I don't blame them because for manufacturing, this is a definitely a uh, affordable way to do it. But I've got here are the Lego Dimensions uh, Back to the Future figures. And they're all, all the heads are double-sided, right? So if I move out Marty and I bring in Doc, I guess the hair got changed. The hair got updated for, for dimensions. Oh, look at that. I can't complain too much. The hair got better for dimensions. The head's the same. He's just got both sides of, of his expressions. And then here's the idea set, Marty. And then for dimensions, they did that, which um, looks like it's the same here, is it? Yeah, the piece is just twisted for whatever reason. Marty, get your hair on right. Now the other thing I happen to find in the box that's kind of fun, so here's the two that actually go to this set. Um, when the movie came out, I got a few different Back to the Future toys because there weren't too many of them. Well, they made a micro machine because at the time, micro machines were a very popular type of toy. This isn't the official Galoob Micro Machine. Let's get a brick to set that on so it's a little higher in the frame. Um, this isn't the official Galoob Micro Machine, but um, you'd think I'd be able to do this. It is the same scale. <laughs> Come on, I wouldn't just put together something really quick. Well, that's just a little too close, so it's not quite in focus. There we go. So, so for scale, that's sitting on a one by four brick, right? So that's, uh, oops, sorry, Marty. Easily the 100% always has been the smallest DeLorean I've ever had. <laughs> the smallest Back to the Future DeLorean I've got. So, fun stuff. At least I think it's fun. Ah, come on. Marty's hair won't stay on. Yeah, Doc's got a remote control car again. Ah. Ben and Lynch objects to the all caps trademark. Oh cool, Felicia's here. Hello, Felicia, how's it going? I'm just talking about Back to the Future and, and some of my old toys. Uh, and Eric says, I still have a micro, mean, micro machine collection. That is awesome. Alrighty. Do I have other Back to the Future stories? Yeah, I probably do. Give me a minute and see if we can't drag some of those out. But for the meantime, let's see if we, uh, which way is this? Oh, it wants to go this way. What are we doing? We want to get going on actually building. So kind of like, well, unlike last week where it took me half an hour to get the stream started, at this point at least it's only taken me 20 minutes to get up to actually starting to build. Uh, the, Lego, the Lego Ideas books are much like the, the adult collector books where it's printed on the black pa uh, paper in the background, which is pretty cool. Is there any way to easily show this? Yeah, kind of, I can do that. So the book. It's printed with the black pages in the background, which is really cool. I kind of like it. It makes it sort of easy to see, I guess, maybe. Maybe I just like it because it's different. Uh, but this is actually, you know, it's a nice thick book. And it's printed on very heavy uh, cardstock, a lot like the um, architecture sets. But uh, I don't have a camera set up specifically just to show the instructions to, to let everyone build along or see what step I'm on. So I apologize for that. But if you guys wanted to, 
Lego has all of the building sets, all the building instructions that, that they have on file available through their website. You just go to lego.com and type in set number 21103 and uh, you can get a PDF of, of the building instructions if you wanted to. Doesn't mean you'll get, you know, it's not the easy way to get the parts, but it is doable. So which is gonna be, let's go ahead and go back to that shot maybe to start with. I'll put me in the upper corner. And so the first couple of pages of course are building the minifigs and putting the skateboard together. I managed that already. We're gonna start with the two 16 long rails. Where's the right place to be for the camera? That's pretty good. So we got two. These are just uh, the two by 16s in dark gray. Need a couple of two by threes. Goes in the front and another two by three goes in the back. Probably should just put a camera on the pile of Legos over here. Because <laughs> apparently micro machines weren't huge where Jerry was. Micro machines were a toy made by a company called Galoob. They were a Californian toy company. And all they were were they're even smaller than HO scale. They were they were like not half size matchbox or hot wheels, like one third size, one quarter size. They were just the the tiniest little uh, die cast cars. And then they started making airplanes and spaceships and, and all sorts of things. And towards the end of the run for um, Micro Machines, they started making big gift sets, box sets of all the ships from Star Trek or all the ships from um, Star Wars. And they came out with like Babylon 5 ships. And those of us that enjoyed tabletop gaming with uh, outer space ships, it was great because the scale worked wonderfully with a couple of different gaming systems. So you just make up your own rules for uh, the Enterprise and all of a sudden you've got the Enterprise flying around whatever game system you're using. So I got a, what is this? This is a six by eight that goes right in the middle. Need a couple of two by four plates. And turn it over. I got uh, the one by two plate modified with clip. There's one. These are the, as best I can remember the names from Bricklink. So if I get it wrong, you know, I'm just going off memory. <laughs> one by two plate with clip. There we are, that's it, yeah, just those two. All right, we get to turn the page. Now I need a couple more plates. I got a one by four and a one by four. And a one by two. And a one by two. Hopefully my image isn't too dark. Realizing it's looking pretty dark. I was, had the camera set up for shooting a, a lot of white paper. Ben Hillich says, that's what I'm doing. I have the PDF on the phone. Got distracted by, uh, I got distracted by the chat box. Because you can kind of see me in the corner getting distracted. Uh, Jerry Rig Prop says, oh yeah, I know Micro Machines. I had some as a kid and the video game on Super Nintendo. Right, very cool. Um, cool. And hello, Strict Aphid. Turn this guy back over. And we want a... Another two by 16 plate across the middle. Then a bunch of the cylinders. What were these? These were, these are one by one bricks modified round, right? Is that what these are called? So I got a couple of red. I'm on step eight. For those of you who are looking at the PDF at home, I'm on step eight, putting on the uh, red and blue cylinders. Turning the page to, to page 
20, which is step nine. Now I'm including a couple of two by two modified. You go in the front, a bit like that. And I need another one, there's another one, a bit like that. Now we're gonna start building the interior. We're on page 21, step 10. I need a couple of uh, black one by four plates. There's a plate, there's a plate. I'm gonna need two grill plates. Are they silver? Yes, there's that one. And that one, was, these are the uh, cast silver, not the, not the chrome ones. And then I need the two cheese wedge pieces, the little one by one slopes. I remember getting a whole bunch of these when, they, when I first realized that they made really good third legs for R2-D2. You take this with the uh, Technic pin, and uh, that was a stud, stud to pin, and put a third leg into your R2 unit. Turning the page to page 22. And now we're gonna start building the wheel assembly. We get to do four of these. Alrighty, so let's set this a little bit aside. <clears throat> And then I'm going to need a whole bunch of the black pins. Talk about, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't know. <laughs> this is just not something I ever got into. It's not something I'm, I got accustomed to because I never, never would know or even consider knowing uh, the Lego sets as a kid, um, just, I remember having the, uh, oh, I need more than that, great. I remember having the denim drawstring bag that was full of Legos. Um, so I'm just accustomed to having, that, that was actually one of the first Lego, official Lego products to keep your collection in. It was this big circle of denim that had a red uh, drawstring or a, like a nylon rope. And so you'd pile all of your Legos in the middle of it and grab the rope around the outside and pick it up. You got this denim sack full of Lego. Um, that's what I really got used to building with. So I never cared about laying everything out in, in, a, in a perfectly symmetrical way to where I can, it's, it just, that wasn't, that wasn't time I wanted to spend doing. I didn't want to spend the time trying to find everything so I could make it easier to find everything. <laughs> Everyone has their different style, so if you guys enjoy doing it, please do it. That's really dark, huh, guys? Sorry about that. Might have to uh, walk around and adjust the cameras a little. Oh, there's the time circuits piece. Just forgot to set that aside when I was showing off the other parts. And one more black Technic pin. Nope, nope, nope. Watch me be missing a piece. That would be perfect. <laughs> one of those, get one of these. I will not focus on finding that one piece, but move ahead because like right now, it'll find, as soon as I'll find it as soon as I stop actually looking for it. All right, so all those go together. Then I've got these yoke pieces. Is this going to be any better? It's still pretty dark. Man, I'm really sorry how dark the stream is. That, that's not cool. Um, these all need the, the three long pins. So this is the, the wheel assembly. This is what's going to allow the wheels to fold to transform between the flying mode and the driving mode. It's the last, um, all right, well, like we said before, we'll just stop looking and we'll find it. Wow. 
one wheel. Two wheels. Three wheels. Ah, there it is. <laughs> it rolled off the table against the box. Four. And I set them all out of frame. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that the camera was that far away. Alrighty. Now I'll turn the the, <laughs> the box on and bury everything. Alrighty, what do we got? We've got a car chassis. seeing movement in the chat. So all four of these just go, there we go. So the colored clips are not actually gonna be clipping anything. Is that the right spot? Yeah, that's the right spot. They're just preventing the, the wheels from uh, going too far when in the drive mode, they stop them from, from rolling too far, uh, from rotating too far. And then we're gonna get Four more of the two by two plate modified, which um, <laughs> there's four of them. There's one. There's two. I'm on step twelve, page twenty-five. There will be a test. No, there won't. No, there really won't. You might have to put up with more silly stories from me, but there won't be a test. Ah, uh, there it is, okay. And then these just wrap around to continue the floorboards. And we're going to turn the page to page 26, step 13. Do I know how many steps? No. Do I want to look ahead? No. <laughs> so I've got a single, whoops, two by six plate. And then, um, which is the better place to put it? Maybe here. Wow. That's totally not a spot I would expect to be going. I need a couple of one by two plates. For those of you who haven't tried to play around with uh, looking at a monitor and actually do something from a camera's point of view, instead of looking at a mirror, the camera of course sees it exactly as it is. So if I move to the right, then on screen stuff moves to the right. Problem is I've got a lifetime of looking in a mirror where if I move to the right, then my, in my image, Stuff moves to the left, and it gets to be really, really weird. So it goes to the blue side. All right, there we are. It can be really, really weird to try and unlearn that little thing that you learned with how to, how to actually work with a mirror. The fact that most of us are uh, so used to it, it's second nature to work with a mirrored image, and it's not a big deal. <laughs> That's actually the dark gray one. You want that to go here. Yeah. And then you got the threes are gonna go here, and here, and a two by six plate there. Like a lot of the uh, specialty sets and, and, and some of the really fancy car sets, it's just a bunch of crisscross plates stacking up together. I mean, it's just barely over a brick tall now, and I'm on step 15. Where's the blue with studs on the side? This is uh, part of the rear bumper. Let's see if they... So I got the rear, rear bumper. Oh, there go my glasses. And uh, at least they're not glass. There go my plastics. Got that, that same headlight piece I talked about with the train goes on either side of it. Now I'm gonna want a single one by two plate. Uh, I want two of those eight, those are eight. And a single two by, two by six plate. The two by six plate is gonna go there. 
And then these guys are going to go on either side. Oh, look at that. It's a white one. When I can see it against the contrast of the other colors in the steps, I can tell the color, but up in the upper corner of the instructions, it's hard for me to see exactly which corner it is. And now we're going to do the same thing again in the front, which is going to have... So here comes a train outside, and I have horrible news. I do not have train cam set up today. Since I got all the cameras set up to be able to continue doing Godzilla as soon as the stream is over, I didn't set up train cam. Also, it's like 100 degrees today, so I didn't want to open up the hole in the side of the building. <laughs> so my apologies, but um, the only train cam we can kind of have, sort of, maybe. Come here. Uh, should have been a little more prepared for this. Uh, I'm on that. I want that one. There we go. I going to fit on screen? So I need this plate. Oh, that's crazy dark. I keep saying that. Well, I don't... Uh... I do have Doc Brown's train from the Lego Dimension set. So it's kind of a train shot, sort of. So the Doc Brown was as a, uh, when you bought the Lego Dimensions sets for the Back to the Future characters, you bought one pack that came with Marty McFly and a little tiny DeLorean and something else, I actually don't remember. And that was the story pack that unlocked the Back to the Future story mode for the game. And then there was a secondary pack that came with uh, Doc Brown with his new hair piece and the time train, so. Fun stuff. Then we're going to go on step 19. I got a 4x4 four four plate. And then I need a couple more of the 1x2 plates and a 2x2. Two two. So 2x2, two 2x2. Two. Two two. Should do that. Do I have, is 3 going to be any good? 3 might be okay. Well, three looks like it actually might be a little bit of a lighter shot. I wanted to keep my hand from being in front of it. Step 20 needs a single. Single red and a single gray. Is that a gray or a silver? That is a silver. And then I got a one by six plate. And I've got a one, two, one by one bricks. Gray, there we are. Or blay, right? These are these slightly bluish gray bl bricks. And I've got enough of the classic space sets that I, I I'm used to seeing the blay now, the, the slightly bluish gray bricks. But uh, I've got enough of the space sets that it was really weird at first. I need two of those, right? Okay, where are these supposed to go? Yeah, the outside, like one goes here. This connects the two of them. Then on the passenger side is red, on the driver's side is silver, and I need one more brick. I'm always concerned that I, uh, at some point in time, may have reached into the box, so, no, that's not it still, and grabbed, um, pieces out to do something else. I've done that on occasion. This set I've tried to keep separate because I really liked the Back to the Future set, so I've tried to keep this set separate. There it is, finally. But um, that's still a concern. Uh, let's see, we're getting distracted. Rescuing my glasses, which will allow me to be able to read the chat. Uh. Oh, good. Kara Skywalker is here. The sun can only cook my brain if I go actually go outside. That is right. <laughs> Wait, is NetHeads here? Oh, NetHead is here. Cool. Hey, Will. 
Yes, the Back to the Future DeLorean. And I haven't even gotten into uh, any play stories yet. But, uh, you know, I thought I might. Strict David Train, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Cara and Nora are having a great time in chat, that's good. So, hello, Will. Yes, uh, this week I just thought, or this time, since I'm only doing this every other week, I thought I would do the Back to the Future DeLorean. Did I lose my, I lost my place. Yep, I'm there. Oh, wow, I really lost a lot. There we are. Now, step 21, page 34, for those of you who are playing along at home. You want to have a couple of the one-by-one -one bricks modified with clip. You here, and a couple more. Go on the other side. These are the clips that hold the uh, the pipes and the hoses in place, if I remember correctly. All righty, now we're gonna have. We need two one by two plates. Got that one and. That one, not that guy. Need two one by one black plates. So what page am I on? I'm on page 35, step 22. Uh, if, if anyone wants to play along at home who wasn't listening before or was you know, have, had happened to step in late, uh, you can always go to lego.com and you can download uh, PDFs for most, if not all the sets they've ever made. And this is set 21103. So if you run over to lego.com and do a uh, instructions search for 21103, you can at least get a copy of the instructions. And the last page of the instructions does give you a part breakdown so you can see all the individual pieces that go into the set. So you can then figure out if you need or want to um, find the pieces in the aftermarket and put together the set for yourself. Oh, I forgot that. Oh, I need two of those. Here I am talking and not looking at the instructions completely. What a shock! There it is. This is all part of the engine compartment. I need two gray cheese wedges, so there's that one, and then I need this one. Cameras are so concerned about having enough space to build, I didn't give myself enough table. Um, then I got the double-sized cheese wedge, which is the, oh, that's a plate, there's the double cheese wedge, the one by two cheese wedge. Oh, and I'm gonna need four of those. Hey, well, it helps when you read all the instructions. So this is actually the seat backs, if I remember correctly, right? Am I doing this the right way? Nope, that's no, on the wrong side of the vehicle. <laughs> wrong, do it again. Cheese wedges. Odin, what's my favorite Back to the Future movie from Kara? Uh, Kara, well, uh, I'll answer this oddly enough again. Uh, it's okay. My favorite one is actually part two. Um, I really, really, really like the first one. The first one is a complete movie. It doesn't need sequels. It's fun that it has them. But overall, because they kind of play around with the universe a little more, and they go forward and they go backwards and they, they create alternate timelines and they predicted the last presidency so terribly well. I really, really enjoy uh, uh, Back to the Future 2. That one's, that one's probably my favorite, even though I am happy to admit that Back to the Future 1 is probably a better movie. <laughs> I just like 2. Also, I like the fact that um, the, the spinner from, the, from Blade Runner is in Back to the Future 2, of course, because all the uh, additional 
things that they brought in from, from other movies, the property masters did to help flesh out the future of Hill Valley. Um, I think I said that right, it was Hill Valley, wasn't it? Not Mill Valley, it's Hill Valley. So there was a period of time that I remember going to Universal Studios and Griff's car was parked out just in the open. Uh, this was the, the black convertible car from, from, from Back to the Future 2015. And um, it was a black car with uh, red pinstriping and stuff on it. And you were, I was able to just climb inside of it. And somewhere, hopefully still in a box buried, I've got a picture of me sitting, you know, me 20-something, sitting in, uh, <laughs> in Griff's car on the... Um, talking away and totally losing my place. Uh, the Universal Studios lot. Hello. I was just letting you know that lunch is, is in your office. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. For when you're ready for, for it. For when I'm ready for it. I'm on page 37 of 100. <laughs> so. Cool. Yeah, having fun. Got uh, cars, cars. Uh, I've, Ellis is talking to me from, from off to the side. Uh, Cara's watching, and actually so is Will from, uh, from Play, so it's kind of cool. A bunch of people are watching. I don't want to like single out all my other friends, but these are s somebody I knew a long time ago and, and another friend that was right there at the very beginning of, of, of me doing this thing, which is really fun. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so, hello, everybody from Ellis. Okay, I'm going to put this upstairs, okay. and it'll be ready for you. Thank you. That and it looks like we're going to be building. Same thing on the other side. So yeah, the Griff's car. So that was kind of fun. Getting to be able to to sit in the movie prop, even though I'm sure I wasn't supposed to. Uh, the doors didn't open. You had to climb into it, and it was just a shell. And since they were, had let it sit outside, all the uh, upholstery and stuff that was in it totally rotting out. It hadn't even been very long. They probably just, you know. It, it's a film. It's a film prop car. It didn't actually have to drive. It didn't actually have to do anything on set. It had to look like a car and be Griff's car. So that's all it could do. It basically obeyed gravity and sat there. <laughs> keep setting stuff off screen because I keep forgetting about which direction everything is. All righty, there's that. The tiny pieces are rough, at least to try and try and show. We got the cheese wedge, which am I putting that on right? No, I got that on wrong. I'm gonna do that, 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 and that. So I got that. And this is the. Uh, yep. Oh, hey, that one actually went on correctly. The cheese wedge. Oh, no, I got the cheese wedge correctly on that side. I just talked my way through putting the second one on wrong. Uh, step 26, I need two dark gray 2x3s. I need two, one, they are modified. I'm not sure these are the 2x2 two two with cutout modified plates. I don't remember what these are called. I'll take a look at what's happening in the chat again here in just a second. As soon as I find the part. <laughs> Okay, I need four one by two plates. So here's one of them, there's one of them, there's one of them. Am I even on screen? I'm not even really on screen, I'm trying to be on screen. And there's one of them. So this is all part of the hood, alrighty. So that goes here, and this goes here, this goes here. Then we do that, and we want, oh, nope, wrong way. We'll go that way. Oh, uh, we got here. Jerry Props is saying, my favorite will always be the first film which was the first film I ever saw in the cinema when I was six. Awesome. Yeah, no, it was, it was a, it's a great movie. It really is. Uh, 
Kara, Kara says two is really great. I love the traveling back to the first movie. Exactly. I love all, all the back and forth and 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 bizarre uh, timeline stuff. Um, no, I haven't seen Back to the Future in a while either, Mr. Kafid. Uh, see, Jay Period is letting me know that the last time I watched the movies was on Back to the Future Day in 2015. They did a screening of all three movies in my local theater. Yeah, that would have been fun. That's probably written right here in the time circuits. That's October, right? Yeah, October 26, 2015, Back to the Future Day. Um, Jerry says, I think I saw that. I was at Universal Studios in LA like 20 years ago on the studio's tour. So the Back to the Future's car just sitting around in a back lot. Yep, it was the black one with, with the red trim. It was Griff's car. I should have in a box somewhere, because I doubt I threw it away, a picture of you know an old actual film picture of me sitting in that car. Uh, and Stupid Monkey is letting us know that my favorite of the DeLorean is the Transformers one. I'm not surprised there was a Transformers DeLorean, but honestly, I don't remember. Um... The name, well, I don't remember the name, really any of the names. Uh, I don't remember the name of the uh, Transformers DeLorean. But I'm not at all surprised they have one. And of course, um, the immediate response from Jack of All Trades from Nora is, uh, I hate you, stupid monkey. <laughs> oh, it's the part over here. Why can't I find the part I'm looking for? Because I used it to build a stand to put my micro machine on. That and that and that. Another one of those little Technic pins goes in the end. And that's how the front bumper is going to attach. Get on there. It still looks like nothing. <laughs> so that was step 28. Step 29, we get to put two two by two plates. These are uh, just, or tiles. No, these aren't plates, these are tiles. Got one there. Got another train going by outside. Can anybody hear it? Got a two by two black and a two by three and a double cheese wedge. And this goes right in the center. Oh, uh, let's see. One of the questions in chat, Nora uh, Jack of All Trades was asking me, what's my favorite version of the DeLorean? Um, honestly, uh, the Back to the Future 2 one, the, the, the classic DeLorean that has Mr. Fusion. Um, that one's my favorite. The one, the one that works, the one that's got the, the flying, you know, the one from two. It's got the flying circuits. It's the one from the end of one, right? So that's probably my, that's my favorite version. <laughs> the president's Ronald Reagan? The actor? Um... So moved on to step 31. That's another. I need one by two plate, uh, one by two, yeah, plate modified with uh, two horizontal clips. So I got one here. And I got one here. And then I need one more one by three black plate. There we are. Perfect. Just toss that right where it kind of needs to go. And we're finally capping over the wheel wells. And these guys go in here. All right, it's the beginning of the, the big exhaust ports. And they need the one by two plates with modified with vertical clip. There's one. And there's the other one. Is that all it is? Yep, step 32. It wants to go on the side and on the side. Take, make, make sure I'm not missing something here. Uh, I hate you, monkey. Ben and Lynch is letting us know if fun, fun fact, DeLoreans weren't made in Ireland. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, fun fact, DeLoreans are trying to make a comeback. There's a company that bought out the, the rights for the vehicles as well as all remaining parts and stock. Um, and they've been supplying uh, parts for years, but they're trying to redo the DeLorean as an electric vehicle. And I think that'd be kind of cool if they get that working. 
Uh, Felicia Kelly says, I like the Smosh Barbie Jeep. Uh, the one that the puppet Ian and Anthony rode around in. Yes, the, the, the Smosh DeLorean was awesome. It was just a pink Barbie Jeep that Pat had put uh, a piece of core plast in the front to make it into the DeLorean. Yeah, it was really cool. What they did was, was to make a DeLorean in, in an afternoon, they did a phenomenal job and it was funny and awesome. Strict David says, gotta go, great stream. Thank you for hanging out, Strict David. It has been an hour. Um, train, the one that works, laugh, J period. Oh yeah, the one that works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which one's my favorite DeLorean? The one that works. <laughs> so I got the two hinge bricks. Now we're to try and keep this stuff in shot a little bit. <laughs> Tape off where my X, where I can have to be. Uh, and then, oh, I've got the, the gauge. And it wants me to put the gauge on top of the silver one by. And then this is going to be, hey, for the second time on the Odin Makes channel, I'm building the inside of the Back to the Future DeLorean. <laughs> I got a time circuit. And the time circuit, arranged in such a way that the minifigs can actually read it, needs to go on that side. And then, oh, nope. It goes across both of the hinge bricks. And I need another decorated plate over there, another gauge, and then the steering wheel. The steering wheel's here. We'll turn that some random way, kind of random. Um, alrighty. And then we have a dashboard. Let's get, let's find the parts. I got a, one by, a two by four tile. I got the four by eight plate. I got two one by two tiles. And I got two one of the older parts too. This was a classic space piece. This is the uh, the one by one plate with uh, horizontal stud, whatever. This thing's gone through like four revisions that I can remember. So let's see. Oops. Can we see the time circuit? Kind of. I can knock Doc Brown over. It's the inside. That's exciting. It's the time circuits. It's fun that you can actually read it on the plates. Hopefully you can on the camera. I'm sorry, Doc. There you go. You guys can have your stuff back. There's your, there's your train. So I got the car. Now I'm going to start building the hood. Hood goes across the top. And then we got the plate that goes in the front. And I guess they don't have a two by six plate. You got those two holders. Oh, okay, cool. We need two binoculars. So I got uh, wrong side. I need to be on this side. That's what's messing me up is I can't remember which side I got to put the, <laughs> where I got the camera set. You know, so you're not sitting here when you're putting the cameras together, so it makes it a little weird to remember where all the cameras want to go. One by two plate, a one by two jumper. I need another one by two plate, and I need another one by two jumper. And there's one. So then the plate goes on, the jumper goes on top of the plate, and then the binocular piece, which can stick on a single stud, goes on the sides, and then those. Go on the front as part of the projector. The one thing I do remember about this kit is uh, it doesn't have a very high swooshability. Uh, in, in, in classic space terms, your, um, the ability to actually grab the set and then fly it around in your hand. Uh, if I remember correctly, it, it, it's really good, but um, it's pretty easy to knock parts off when you're holding it. <laughs> 
So this one still has, no, this could still be Mr. Fusion. It just hasn't happened yet. So Mr. Fusion, how many of you, and I'm sure most of you know this, quick make sure here. Check out all the trades. The one that works, no way, okay. Um, and, oh yes, Mr. Fusion, that's what I was talking about before I distracted myself by trying to catch up with, with what was going on in, in the chat room. Um, Mr. Fusion was basically just a Krups coffee grinder, right? That's all it was, I think it was Krups. Um, well, there happens to be a pair of Mr. Fusions in the Nostromo uh, kitchen or in the Nostromo galley. So in Alien, uh, in the very beginning, uh, you've got a sequence where Ash, right? Yeah, right? Wow, I'm forgetting my character's names. Anyway, the first guy that wakes up goes and makes coffee in the galley, and there on the wall are a pair of those uh, coffee grinders. So I, I guess, you know, Mr. Fusion powers the, the galley of the Nostromo and Alien. Need the black one by two plates with horizontal bar. There's one of them. And there's the other one. And these are supposed to clip in. This is for the, the big old vents that go in the back, cooling vents or whatever they are. I need two red round plates, and I need two, two? Two jumpers. So there's one, and what's the other one? It's hiding, there it is. I like to, trying to talk your way through building a Lego set. So that's gonna go here, that's gonna go back here, and then that's gonna go there, and that's gonna go there. Alrighty. Now we're gonna build those big exhaust ports. Okay, so I need eight of the uh, headlight pieces. There's four, six, seven, eight. I need four one by two black tiles. There's two, come on, the part, the part Part pile's getting low. There's two. I need four of the hinge bricks. And I need two of the two by two slopes. Is that it? That is it. Alrighty. Now, you're going to want me to put that with a plate in front. Good, they're on. With a hinge on top. Sorry, all you see are hands. <laughs> With that. And then you just do it again, right? Yep, you just do it again. With the plate. It's gonna go opposite of that. Yeah, that seems right. Show a close-up of this in just a moment. With the hinge. There's that. There's that. With the hinge. Okay, Doc. I think I'd be able to build Legos even left-handed. Oh, I hit the wrong button again anyway. Wow, that's just dark and black and hard to see. But, um, 
Wow, can you see anything at all? You can see it when the... But it's the vents that go in the back of the DeLorean. Wow, that's really hard to see. He says for me on my screen, I'm sure it's just a dark mess for you guys. Sorry about that. Grade two by two. That I need a jumper. Jumper's that one one by two plate with a single stud in the middle. I need a cheese wedge. Seriously, I, the, the, the guys call them cheese wedge online. There's that. And then I need a couple more of those black one by headlight bricks. Which nope, that's there. It is. Even building in the right spot, I change things up on myself again. I'm on page 59, step 43. One of those with the jumper in front, knock it over, the cheese wedge, and then the headlight bricks go facing out behind the wedge. And then all that goes up. Yeah, just hold up against your black t-shirt. Everybody can see that, it's great. That goes up. Uh, <laughs> it's just part of the engine assembly. Who's the vice president? Jerry Lewis? <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, I agree with you, stupid monkey. I wish we got a full-size time train as a set. That would have been great. Speaking of a train, one is going by. Thank you. Joe is here. He's uh, working on something. I'm not quite I sure what. Paint the Saiyan armor. Ah, he's he's painting the Saiyan armor. Very cool. Because I'm not going to be back. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, but I'm not going to be back until uh, the stream on Sunday. Oh, gotcha. Right. Cool. You'll be back tomorrow for Among Us. Yes. Sweet. Just in time to stab stupid monkey. Hear that, stupid monkey? Joe's coming for you. <laughs> Actually, he's coming for all of us. We had an impromptu game about a week ago, and we played, what, eight games, and Joe was the imposter six times? <laughs> he's six or seven. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so for those of you who may have made it this far into the stream and are watching in the future, um, we've been doing an Among Us game, a weekly Among Us game with the... Uh, with Different people on, on Odin Makes Discord. So if you want to get in on the um, here, hold my knife fun of Among Us, then you are certainly welcome to. Just check out uh, patreon.com slash Odin Makes to figure out how to get your membership into the Discord. Well, you'll get invited to live games with Joe and myself playing Among Us. Maybe something else in the future, but right now that's just what we're doing because it's very easy. And, um, and of course, you get invited to live streams like this to be able to chat directly uh, and a few other things that go on. And if uh, you are in the future and made it watching this far, thank you. Appreciate that. And if you're in the present and are still watching right now, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> still need a one by two, huh? Where's my uh, one by two wedge? I see a couple of single cheese. Oh, there it is. It's upside down and facing me in an orientation I wasn't looking for. That goes on the side. It goes on the side of the engine. Kara says, I'm excited for Among Us. Sweet. Eric Gordon, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for tuning in for as long as you could. 
Tuba Monkey is going to try and join Among Us this time. That's awesome. Alrighty, now we get to put the time circuit in. So we just need a couple of, uh, a couple more of the one by one. And then one of the few Back to the Future props I've actually made, the time circuit. There's a video of that right here on Ode Makes if you want to watch me make a, a cheap and easy time circuit. I know there's a few of them been made online, different places including DIY Prop Shop. And interestingly, not the only, well, hopefully this is interesting, not the only Back to the Future prop replica that I have made. Um, it's the only one on my channel, if I remember right. But um, there it is. Not able to talk and look for parts at the same time. I don't find them easily enough. Let me pause the build for a minute. And I get my glasses on, I'll click over to my control panel. There we are. It's not super easy to see, but um, one of the other Back to the Future prop replicas I made wasn't Mr. Fusion, but I got to make the base for Mr. Fusion. Isn't that exciting? So what we're looking at here in this picture, when I worked at a company called Play Incorporated with uh, NetHeads, who at least was in the chat, maybe they still are, the president of that company, Play, collected real movie props. He also had a number of replica props. And Back to the Future was definitely his favorite movie. So he had a number of Back to the Future props. This is an actual Mr. Fusion. The, the white base is, is part of the original Mr. Fusion. So this Mr. Fusion is one of those coffee grinders. The, the uh, kind of black, dark, smoky, transparent piece, that's the cup you'd pull out after you ground your coffee in it. You'd load the coffee from the top and um, they just spray painted it white because the, the logo was just printed on the side of the coffee maker. The base was a, a cast. I don't know what, they, they just custom made something and made a mold of the cast. So this particular Mr. Fusion supposedly came off of one of the close-up cars. So they got a number of different cars they make for most movies, not just Back to the Future, where they have, um, uh, they got the car that you drive around in, and then you have, it's just the inside of the car for close-ups. So the whole front of the car is removed. It's just the, 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 the chassis uh, with, with like the doors and the dashboard and maybe the windshield. So in a controlled environment, the actors can sit inside and turn the wheel and they just rear project you know, what's going on behind them. So supposedly this Mr. Fusion is off of one of those cars and it is actually a Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future. And also I got to play with a real hoverboard. So there's the Still kind of see the Mr. Fusion in the background with a really goofy large lipstick display case that's not plugged in. But the hoverboard is, a, um, is one of the screen used hoverboards from Back to the Future 2. So the pink stripes on, on the hoverboard, the big pink stripes on the top and the bottom, those are actually Velcro strips to attach to um, um, <laughs> Marty's feet. Wow, I can't think of Michael J. Fox's name at all. Um, and the fun thing with this particular hoverboard that I noticed right away was that on the back side, so the part underneath the, the part that says board, there were holes where somebody had f just screwed some screws into it, like drywall screws or something, right? You, you can see the damage. You can't see it in this picture, but you can see it up close. When I watched the making of uh, videos for it, for this, there's a shot where they're getting ready to do some wire effects. They got Michael J. Fox hooked up to the wire harness so they can fly him around like he's hovering. And I think it was this particular board they screwed to his foot. So he's got his, his Nike shoes and they ran screws in through the soles of the, of the shoes from the side and into the board to make sure the board didn't fall off during, during flying around over everyone else's head. And I think this specifically was that board because of the specific damage on this board. I thought that was, that was pretty fun um, to be able to see that kind of a detail. And we'd made a really kind of a silly case to, to put it in. It's got a mirror back so you can kind of see both sides. I didn't, uh, I didn't load a picture of the backside, but I do have pictures of the vacuform backside. The, the hover pad and the thing in the center, those were all just vacuform pieces on, on, on the boards. 
Uh, they also made a number of different styles of boards. This one had a styrofoam core, so it's super lightweight. They made one that has a plywood core. That one you carried around a lot more because it was more robust. You could, it could handle being dropped. Um, but they also only made a couple of the Pitbull. So this was Griff's board from 2015, the Pitbull. This one was one of the styrofoam boards. And there was also a plywood board for this, for carrying under your arm. But the Pitbull had uh, boosters as well as tow cables in the back of it, right? Because it had more power. Well, they only really made one set of those pieces and they moved them from board to board as they needed them for the shot. So when the movie wrapped, those, those special pieces got put onto the, dry, onto the plywood board and it got sold as part of that prop. Paul got a hold of this one, which was uh, just a styrofoam one that didn't have those extra parts. And that is all a guess on my part because I know those pieces existed, but we didn't have them with the boards that we had in Paul's museum. So I've assumed that the parts moved around because I know they had different boards. So I assume the parts moved around and that's why Paul's didn't have the pieces because he wasn't given reasons for why those pieces were missing. They just, they just were missing. But um, getting to work on, on uh, Paul's collection of um, uh, movie props, his little, his little museum was really pretty fun. And, and that was a super cool thing that I got to do at play. Oh, hey, Jerry Riggs is showing us uh, he's got a, uh, a hoverboard. He made one too. <laughs> and he's, he's still got the round piece in the back. So NetHeads, Will says, yes, I am still here. <laughs> Sweet. Alrighty, so a few more Back to the Future stories. And there was also a number of paper props that uh, Paul had, like the Save the Clock Tower flyers and um, the Ooh La La magazine and a whole bunch of that stuff, but apparently there was a problem in storage and a lot of that might have gotten water damaged, which is really freaking unfortunate. Um, the, those paper props were, none of those were actually screen used because uh, most of the time with paper props, it's easy to print extras. So if it gets wrinkled or ruined, then you have backups. So all the, the paper stuff he had, which also he had a, the dust cover for the sports almanac, um, all those were just uh, unused official props, not non-screen used. On Discord, Jerry's letting us know that with his uh, hoverboard, the, the battery's gone. It doesn't hover anymore. That's, that's a bummer. I hate when the micro Mr. Fusions run out. All righty. Now we're gonna build the front bumper. So I need a two and a two by two and a two by three. Where's, where's my framing? There we are. Those just kind of go together. And then I need to do the opposite with the plates with a, a one by three plate and a one by two plate. Those of you following along at home, I'm on step 48, I guess still. Well, I think it's the beginning of 49. This is page 66. Need a black cheese wedge and a double wide black cheese wedge. Black cheese. There it is. One of the fun things with Paul, um, okay, that's, what, that's what's happening. So Paul Montgomery, one of the fun things with him with his uh, movie prop collection and, and his interest in movies and sci-fi in general. Um, occasionally different people would come by to visit. So I very briefly almost met Joel Hodgson once from Mystery Science, Science Theater 3000. He dropped by, but uh, by the time I, I got over to where the museum was, because I did a lot of the displays and stuff for the museum, so I was kind of okay to be in there. Um, Joel was, was excusing himself and leaving, so it's kind of like, oh, well, there he goes. Um, then a few months later, Joel gifted a, uh, 
a present to Paul. And what it was was a recast of the George Powell um, Martian War Machine from War of the Worlds. So that was actually really, really cool. And that was one of those things that showed up in a crate. Paul calls me back to the muse museum and goes, hey, look what I got. I need you to put it together and put it on a stand. So, okay. <laughs> I'm getting paid to do this? Sweet. <laughs> Got the front put on. One of the other TV, I think I mentioned this before on one of the other live streams. One of the other things I remember with, with Paul and, and his uh, affinity for stuff uh, was Babylon 5. Babylon 5 was the, the television show that came out right around the same time that Deep Space Nine did. And it was um, a very budget conscious television program. Uh, with, with Space Station Babylon 5, and they would reuse a lot of stuff. They would make sure that um, different things in, in the show could be not only the rug in one, ch one set, but a tapestry on another set, and then uh, like a curtain or something else, right? So on and so forth. And they used a, a 3D program called Lightwave to do all the renderings, all the 3D renderings for all the ships that fly around in the show. Uh, Lightwave was um, the 3D program created by one of the companies that all the people from Play, not all, but a portion of the people from Play came from, um, New Tech. So uh, a lot of the Play people still talked to a lot of Babylon 5 people because they knew them, right? They, they were, I think it was all being done in the same city. It was all being done out of Kansas or somewhere in the Midwest. And uh, so it was, I don't remember which season it was, but it was one of the later seasons of Babylon 5, and I remember walking in on the end of a phone call that, that Paul was having, and uh, he was talking to somebody from the Babylon 5 production crew, and they were saying, you know, how much money did they still need in order to wrap up probably the final season or the second to last season? And, and Paul's response was, what, that's it? Okay, well... You guys have got it. I'll get that sent out to you. And so he personally funded <laughs> a good hunk of the final season. <laughs> so thank you, Paul, for that. I'm going to build some doors. Since these are probably going to be mirror images of each other. I just should just set this up and do them at the same time. I'm on step, uh, well, I'm on page 75. I don't know what step this is right now. I got the one, one, two, three block on top of the step number. There it is. Uh, step 54. So. <laughs> That and that. I need a one by three plate because this is the window. All right, yep. And that's going to be the rear view mirror. So, what is that? That is. Uh, My phone buzzed at me, I don't know why. Somebody is sharing their Back to the Future toys on Discord. It goes like that. But yeah, good, that's actually you guys can kind of see that. It's sort of tight in the corner. Um, oh, okay. Made a whole bunch of those. These are the one by two plates with horizontal sidebar. I think that's what they're called. It's gonna go there. That's gonna go there. This is part of that 
slightly fiddly weirdness of the vehicle that when the doors attach, that's it. I mean, it works, but it's not solid. <laughs> and then yeah, we can go through a number of steps where we build the other one, I already did that. And then we're gonna add in Okay, one of those and one of those. I'm gonna set it in the wrong spot. And then I need, how do these go? These go offset. I'll get these corrected once I get the other parts put on. These vertical clips are just gonna hold on the, the front ends of what's gonna be the windshield, which are simply one by three plates with the one by two with the uh, horizontal bar end. There's another one by three and there's another one of those. That's it, right? Uh, yup. All the things that... unfold. Um, oh, hey. Looks like we're getting tires put on. Starting to become a DeLorean. Oh, it wants that side out. Now it's a car. All right, time for the rear bumper. these, a couple of cheese wedges, and the modified plates with a dark gray one by six, there it is, snaps onto it on top. Uh, then we got a dark gray two by three with a Light, light blay, one by two, and that goes that way. And then we got a couple of dark gray, one by ones with horizontal, with vertical clip. There we are. Another piece that's gone through a number of redesigns over the years. Then, okay, well I do have this opposite the, the way the instructions are. Amber's gonna go next. And we're just gonna go there. And then you got the brake lights. And I'm quickly putting this together. I am not obsessively making sure that all of the studs read Lego in the same direction. That's just not gonna happen. I'm sure everyone is heartbroken. It's giving us a detail here that in the first movie, the California license plate read out of time. When Doc returned from 2015, the license plate became a barcode. Yes, I do remember that. And then another movie that had a lot of barcode license plates was Free Jack. And there's a, there's a cinematic treat. Had a friend that um, liked to say he had the uh, what do you call it the free free jack principle the free jack free jack equation. It's one of those things because at the time free jack was on cable so often it would be easy to come across a movie that maybe you want to see maybe you don't want to see so you just kind of decide would I like to watch this or would I, would I rather see free jack and so uh, <laughs> that became his like litmus test for if the movie was actually good or not. Is it, is it, is it more fun to watch than Free Jack? <laughs> I mean, you know, Mick Jagger in the future with 
with, with barcode license plates. So what, what else do you want? <laughs> now I'm gonna finally put on the hoses. I remember when these came out for the space, uh, space sets. They attach to the underside. Goes into the clip, goes into the clip, goes in the thing. Goes into the clip, goes into the thing. Goes into the thing, there we are. Good Transformers discussion in Discord. Big Jerry saying he's a big Generation 1 Transformers fan. I can agree with you. That was, uh, that was the first series I was paying attention to and definitely my favorite, just because that was the first series for me. More pipes. Oh, hey. Now we're up to step 63, which apparently is Doc and Marty getting ready to deal with the DeLorean. But there's still parts left. What could the other parts be? Well, I know it's the time circuit. It's, it's, the, it's a bunch of other pieces still. There's your skateboard, Marty. You're going to need that. But ultimately, um, well, let's see. Can I do that? Where's that at? That was right over here, wasn't it? Ultimately, I can be distracted at a moment's notice to find something that I should have prepared beforehand if I was planning ahead. Hey, what do you know? Putting it on this actually gets it up into a good, good part of the frame. and Doc. No, there's no Einstein, which a um, bit of a bummer. Seems like um, kind of missed out on that a little bit, but uh, shouldn't be too hard to go through the, some of the Friends sets, some of the Friends pieces, and find a, an adequate Einstein piece. The doors do open. They just lift up. Which is a little awkward because of how I mean, it works. It totally works, but um, they're a little sensitive because they're just held on by a single horizontal clip. You can kind of see the inside. And yeah, you're actually able to get Doc and Marty Come on, guys. All right, how's it? Put in their giant fingers. Now the one fun thing in, in, what is it, Back to the Future 2, is you know, when they put uh, Jennifer in the back seat. There is no back seat. I mean, there's nothing there. Directly behind Doc and Marty, the DeLorean's a bulkhead. I don't know where she was all of a sudden. The, 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 the DeLorean just kind of got bigger. <laughs> or do they have to, have to scoot them into their... Okay, fiddly. <laughs> Oh, the doors aren't closing all the way. <laughs> it's hitting Doc's hair. There we go. Oh, 
broke the door. What a shock. Fiddly. <laughs> Swooshability, low. <laughs> anyway. DeLorean is a TARDIS. Doc is a Time Lord confirmed. confirmed. Sure. Doc Brown could totally be a Time Lord. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Here, we'll put the DeLorean on the front of the DeLorean. Here, the DeLorean's the hood ornament for the DeLorean. <laughs> Jack of all trades, we need foam. Ah, foam. Why do you need foam? <laughs> You're feeling left out because there's no foam? <laughs> Here, here's, here's a piece of foam. <laughs> Here, the, uh, the mini DeLorean can, can be displayed on a piece of foam. <laughs> there, it's in a dramatic pose, much better for the camera because it's sitting on a piece of foam. <laughs> so that's the, that's the Lego Ideas. That's the, the not micro machine. The, right? Oh, I can't read that right now. I read China. And then there's the Lego Dimensions DeLorean. So this is the one that actually came with uh, the Marty for Lego Dimensions. So it's just the, the piece. With the Lego Dimensions, it was one of those Toys to Life games. So it has a little RFID chip on the bottom. So you set it down on the, on, on the, um, the control pad. And the, and the video game knows that in life, you've set this particular model onto the game pad. And all of a sudden, this model appears in the video game. And you're able to drive it around, fly it around, and, and do what you need to do. Gives you the, gives you the time machine. You know, it's a TARDIS. Just like J period said. Let's see. We've got... Got that clear piece. And then we have another slope. And one by two clear brick. And all of this just attaches kind of randomly on the bottom. Because that allows, I think they have to pull out, don't they? Because the tires are able to fold down. Did I forget to put, uh... no, 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 that's back to the future one. Here's Mr. Fusion right now, okay. a kind of a funky Mr. Fusion, but it's Mr. Fusion. I think it's supposed to take the yellow brick off, but I'm not going to bother. I'll just stick it on top of it right now. So that gives us the 2015 version of the, uh, of the DeLorean. I didn't realize the Mr. Fusion was totally off, off screen. Is that in focus? Did I push it into the not in focus spot? Yeah, a little. But then, now the one thing you're supposed to do in order to do the 1885 version is uh, change out the wheel wells for the red wheels, because it came with a set of red wheels. But, um, I don't want to bother to change around the tires, so you'll forgive me if that step I'm going to uh, skip on. But to change it to the Back to the Future 3 DeLorean, we need to make the upgraded or the <laughs> steampunk time circuit. And this front plate comes off as a place to attach it. The steampunk time circuit is a couple of orange plates with a bunch of greebles on it because greebles are what makes science fiction work, right? That and one of those. Just a Great big old 
neat hand in the way. Put on, start putting on the second layer of Oh, good, I got the right camera on there. That and that. The black cheese wedge. There's actually a, a piece that does that now that doesn't require the... Cheese wedge. That, and we got a couple of the one by one tile. It's round, one goes there. It goes here. Well, that's just some of the spare parts. And then, what am I missing? This guy goes here. That and that with the side binoculars. Greebles. Oh, I need the piece of foam. There we are. Um, got one more. Right. And this piece goes here with a wedge that's going to be the front and another vertical clip. All that goes on here. And that becomes the time circuit box that goes on the front. Weird they took Mr. Fusion off. Which gives you the 1885 time circuit. But I still like just the... I know that there's uh, people have done modifications because you've got the Lego whip antenna, so it's easy to put that off the back in order to get the, the lightning, lightning rod that catches. But there we go. <laughs> Definitely a set that I really liked. I was really, really stoked to get this when I got this. I still really like this set, even though when I try to put the guys in it, I often break the doors. <laughs> it's part of the whole. Not quite got the swoosh ability it should have. Uh, Jack of all trades wants me to play The Power of Love by Julie, <laughs> Huey Lewis in the news. No. <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> Stupid Monkey apparently had some lag and says that the bounce from two times speed while it's getting caught up to, to real time makes Odin sound drunk. <laughs> That's a different stream. That's a different stream. <laughs> Stupid Monkey says that this is a set that I really want to track down someday. Yeah, definitely. I can agree with that. This is a very, very, very cool set. I like this set a lot. Uh, I was going to, let's see, move these guys. So... Is there a way to, well, the time circuit's just, I was going to do a, to try to do some sort of a, nope, this isn't working out the way I want it to. This is compelling TV, Odin. <laughs> I was going to try to have some sort of a close up of the time circuit piece. Yeah, I think this is a really cool set. I think they did a lot of work and, and really packed a lot into the small model. Um, obviously, I've, I've got a few little complaints, nitpicks about it, but um, overall, so what? They got one made, it's cool. There's the, there's the Mr. Fusion. Out of focus, come on, Mr. Fusion. Get yourself in focus here. Kind of a very odd, not right, not quite the right scale. That's a, that's a huge Mr. Fusion. 
Set these aside and I can bring out, well, get the stand off. There we are. So that's the, that's the DeLorean from Lego Dimensions. This one's super simplified because it's a, uh, it's like a, a bonus thing. It's not bonus, it's actually what you bought the kit for, right? Is to be able to get the DeLorean. But it's just a very simplified version of the DeLorean for the game. And then you rebuild it in multiple different ways because uh, that's part of the game. Is they, as you play the game, when you play LEGO Dimensions, the, the, the kits that come with LEGO Dimensions don't come with instructions uh, because the instructions are given to you in the game as you unlock those different portions of the game. So that was the only time train that was actually officially made was for LEGO Dimensions. So gives you your remote control train for Doc, right? Anyway, I had a lot of fun. Uh, it, was, it was actually enjoyable and relaxing to stop and spend a couple of hours putting together a Lego set. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I hope uh, uh, my, my crazy stories that I could think of that were somewhat connected to the Back to the Future as best as I could remember were, were, were kind of enjoyable. Uh, there were a few other paper props I remember that Paul had, like he had an Enchantment Under the Sea poster. Uh, it was a backup. Uh, we could never find it on screen, but it was just, it was exactly the way any of us would have done it in high school, or it was just a big piece of uh, white uh, craft paper that was then painted with tempera paints to say Enchantment Under the Sea. It was just way more detailed than I think anybody in high school would actually spend time doing. Um, but it had a really good mermaid on it and it was a big landscape. Can't find it in any of the hallway shots. Doesn't mean it isn't there and it just didn't make it on camera, but I've never actually seen it in the film. Uh, he also had one of the flyers for Save the Clock Tower and uh, that was really fun to kind of read because it doesn't really have real text. All the big words you're supposed to see are real, but then it's just this copy and pasted nonsense uh, article that goes on underneath it. Let's see, what other paper props did he have for Back to the Future? He had the Ola La magazine, he had the dust cover. Uh, that might be, that might be it. I don't think he had anything else. It's quite a bit in a way, but uh, he had a qubit. That was kind of cool. One of the original uh, square coins from Battlestar Galactica, the, the 70s Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, he, he had a single little cubit, um, but I don't remember any other, I think that's it for Back to the Future. But um, those are the Back to the Future props I got to play with that were real. I, uh, if you want to see me make more Back to the Future stuff, there is a Back to the Future interior DeLorean build that I did a couple of years ago. Uh, that was just a set piece for a green screen, and that was, that was a lot of fun to do. But um, Stupid Monkey lets me know that my stories are always great, Odin. Thank you, Stupid Monkey. And he also loves the Lego Dimensions. I have so many of them. Yeah, pretty much. I think Cyborg. Cyborg and Supergirl are the only two Lego Dimension figures that I don't have. Uh, that may also be the only sets that I don't have. I think I've got everybody else. I have Green Arrow, but I never got all the others. Um... It looks good, but can, can it travel through time? Yes, actually it does. Um, this DeLorean absolutely travels through time and it is currently doing so. The problem is it's just traveling ahead at about, you know, one second per second and it can only really move forward. So it's not that exciting, but it is capable of traveling through time. So there you go, Jerry. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I hope you had fun. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I'll be back in two weeks with another Lego build of some sort. Looks like they're gonna run about two hours. Uh, I do still have a few sets that I haven't opened that I've had for a long time. Uh, I've got a set of a, of a, a Lego store. I've got a set of, uh, the, I've got the Scarif set with the, with the sand speeder. I talked about that before. I've got, um, I've got another big train set. Um, so, also, I can go try and find other things I can, I can dig out of my collection or my hoard, as one of my friends was so happy to point out that when, you're, when your Lego collection outgrows the denim bag and outgrows a couple of flip crates, and you actually have to go out and buy trash cans to put your Lego sets in. So, I mean, I'm using this one as a trash can now, but there was a point in time when I bought five of these to put my Legos in. Uh, that's no longer a collection. That's a hoard. So 
apparently I've got a problem, and it's really fun to get to share my problems with you. So thank you all for coming along. Thank you, Stupid Monkey, for enjoying my stories. Thank you, Nora, for, for sticking around and screaming out train and being the fantastic person you are. Kara Skywalker, Jay Period, if you're still watching, thank you guys very much, and, and I hope to get to see you again here soon because you're in my neck of the woods. I'm going to be at the Lodi Comic Con in just a couple of weeks, so it's possible I'll get to see Guard there. And um, Jerry, you know, I know you, you were supposed to have gone to bed. I think you did. So if you're watching this later on after you woke up, I'm sorry that DeLoreans, uh, I guess Ben and Lynch was still letting us know that DeLoreans are never made in Ireland. But uh, all of you guys, I'll see you all tomorrow at uh, 11 um, Pacific time. So adjust for where you are for our Among Us game. And we'll enjoy that for an hour while we quickly stab each other in the back and all the great fun that is Among Us. Um, I'll stab you later, Jerry Rig. Well, that was a bit of a crack. Uh, okay. Jerry, I'm not quite sure what that means, but as Joe yelled out from the sides over here, stab you later. <laughs> All of you, thank you very much. I had a lot of fun. I guess it was enjoyable to share some goofy stories with you. Are you trying to come over here, Joe? No. Okay. No, I was just looking at the memory. And Ed and Stream. You know, if I actually hit fade to black, it would probably uh, look a whole lot more professional. <laughs>